Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Many gamers wonder when they're building their new machine, how many cores do I need on my CPU? How much does hyperthreading help me if this machine is strictly for gaming? Today on NCIX Tech Tips, we strive to find the answer to that question once and for all. Now for our test bench, we went with an X79 platform because on the consumer level, that's the only place you can really find a six core, 12 threaded processor. In terms of the scenarios that we ran, we went with realistic, popular CPU configurations. So we went with single core, dual core, quad core, and six core, and then we reran each of those scenarios with hyperthreading then enabled. So that is eight different scenarios and we ran a couple different games. We went with Battlefield 3 because it's the Frostbite 2 engine is well known to leverage additional CPU cores, and then we also went with The Witcher 2 because one of the other things that I think is important to illustrate in this particular video is where you get the benefit in terms of investing in a gaming rig. Is it on the graphics card or is it on buying more cores for your CPU? And I think you guys will really see the point of that once we show the benchmarks. Last but not least, I think that it goes without saying that we kept everything else the same. The clock speeds of the CPUs remain the same. All the other configuration remains identical from test to test. The only thing we're doing is we're going into the BIOS and manually configuring how many CPU cores and how many threads are enabled on our 3930K, which is running at default clock speeds. So as you folks probably know, there are a wide variety of different products available on the market that are aimed towards gamers. There are, for the most part, quad cores, but there's quad cores with and without hyper-threading. There's six cores with and without hyper-threading, including things like Extreme Edition processors with well, six cores and hyper-threading and unlocked multipliers and all that great stuff. And on the AMD side, you can even get an 8-core CPU in the form of the 8150. So what I want to do is a new segment we're doing. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm actually on Twitter now as well under Linus Tech. And we are going to take live feedback from Twitter followers and let them interact with the show. So here we go. I asked the question, how many CPU cores do you think a modern gamer needs for a new gaming rig? So we're going to let people dial in what they think before we show the results and edit the episode and upload it. All right, so we're starting to get some responses here. Here we go. So we've got six, four, four cores minimum, four physical cores at four gigahertz at least, all of them. <laughs> it looks like the general consensus seems to be that four cores is actually Carlos Bosco probably has it about right where he's saying two cores but four will become necessary because when we do our testing you guys are going to see that at least one of the games we're looking at is not going to run as well on two cores as it does on four and it's a fairly modern game I'd say quad core BF3 is the only game I know of that supports six cores four four someone's retweeting it four max most games don't even utilize all four unless you change your config I'm not sure what he means by config. Jeremy, maybe you can clarify that at some point in the future. As someone who's still living with a single core, I'd say four, but most of the i-series are quad cores. Two cores. So I think right now we can say the general consensus is that most people seem to think quad core or anywhere from two to four cores. Let's move on. Last but not least, before we show our final results, there were a couple of strange findings that Slick encountered during his testing. It was actually Slick who ran the benchmarks today. One of them was that in Battlefield 3, with two cores or fewer, one of your supporting NPCs in the comrades level actually outright disappears. So he's not there to help you. The guy who pushes open the gate, if you have a quad core, you've seen him. If you have a dual core, I guess the gate just opens magically because that was what he observed. So that was kind of interesting. And if you tried to launch Battlefield 3 with just one core enabled, at least what happened to us, is we ran into what you see behind me. This entire time we've been filming, we've been giving it a chance to launch Battlefield 3 with one physical core enabled and no virtual cores, and it hasn't actually managed to launch the game. Now that said, there's very few modern CP, well, no modern CPUs that are single core CPUs. So this was more of a hypothetical scenario, but I think that really shows you guys that while it may not necessarily be true that you need a four or a six core CPU for gaming right now today, the evolutionary steps in terms of designing the gaming engines to better utilize multi-core CPUs are definitely occurring. Now it's finally time to talk boring charts and graphs, although if you guys are actually interested in this topic, which I hope you are if you've stayed tuned with us this whole time, 
This might actually be the part that you're most interested in. So the first one that we want to present is the Battlefield 3 results. So you can see we've got our cores without hyperthreading here. These are average frame rates. And we have our cores with hyperthreading here. So let's go with without hyperthreading. The one core test outright failed. And all of our two core, four core, six core tests were all within what I would consider to be pretty much our margin of error. Uh, because we are doing manual run-throughs in order to avoid any optimizations that the graphics card makers or CPU makers or anyone might have put into the game in order to make the benchmark scores look better or worse than they really are. In terms of hyper-threading, you see our one core with hyper-threading actually does manage to launch, but is the only standout in terms of performing less well than all of the other results. So it looks like for Battlefield 3, two cores is still good enough to get you there. Now the tweets are still rolling in almost faster than I can read them, but I have to encourage you guys, follow on Linus Tech and make sure that you respond quickly whenever you see the hashtag Tech Tips Live so that you can see your tweet on the air and hopefully we can do more Q&A type sessions like that. For now, let's present the rest of the results. So here's Witcher 2. This is a very graphically intensive game. We had it turned up to 1080p ultra details, even with Uber sampling on. And you can see here, the only results that really stand apart from the rest of them are those single core results. Now, from the review I did on my Linus Tech Tips channel of a variety of different CPUs, we can see that the efficiency of a CPU architecture, whether it's AMD versus Intel, Bulldozer versus uh, Tubin, or uh, third generation core processor versus second generation core processor, that still matters a lot. Clock speed till still matters a lot. However, if you are trying to build a gaming rig on a budget, it looks like you might not be that bad off with either, you know, quad core with no hyper threading, like a 3570K, or even a dual core i3, and then a beastly graphics card, bearing in mind, of course, that with the i3, you're not going to be able to overclock it because only K series processors on the Intel side are really capable of overclocking. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips on YouTube. And also, hey, if you guys want to participate in these live Twitter sessions, also follow on Linus Tech.